Please, I want you to now stand and let's just uh, put it up and celebrate our Father, a man that God has raised for us to be a blessing to us. And I would want you just to put your hands together as we welcome His Grace, the Bishop Dr. Joy Makando. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you love Jesus, let me hear a loud praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift up your right hand as we talk to God. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. We bow before you this evening. To acknowledge you as the true and living God. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you for what you mean to us. You are our all in all. In you we live, move, and have our being. Accept our worship this morning, this evening. Accept our praise. Because you deserve it. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The one who was, is, and will be. Blessed be your name. We thank you, Lord, for what you did on Friday. We thank you for what you did Saturday. We thank you for what you did this Sunday. We thank you that you are a God of plans. A God of purpose. Father, concerning these three days of power, fulfill your purpose. M meet us, O oh God, at our point of need. As we close these three days of power, may you be glorified. May you complete what you started on Friday. May you do for us what a man cannot do. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Move in our midst. Speak to people by name. Heal the sick. Break prison doors. Set the captives free. Let there be miracles. Recreative miracles. Father, part our Red Seas. As we go back, cause us to walk on dry ground. Drown our Egyptians, our enemies. We give you praise. We give you honor. Father, we ask, O oh God, that as a result of this meeting, Grant, O oh God, supernatural increase upon this congregation. Supernatural increase upon every congregation represented here. Father, we ask, O oh God, bless every bishop. Bless every reverend. Bless every pastor. Bless every elder. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless every deacon and deaconesses. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word is anointed. Anoint these lips of clay. Cause your people to mix faith to this word. Let this word, O oh God, usher your people into divine overflow in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree and declare that this is now holy ground. Let your angels move freely as ministering spirits. We ask all this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Please be seated in the wonderful presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Tell your neighbor you are in the right place. Tell your next neighbor there is hope for you. Allow me just to quickly express our gratitude to Bishop Francis Chatupa and his dear wife and the leadership of the church for taking care of us. We have enjoyed the hospitality. Our stomachs have experienced an overflow. And so we are grateful to God. And uh, the members say Te Pakuleka. We want also to thank all the reverends and all the pastors. And I uh, want to acknowledge also our neighbor, uh, Bishop Mbewe. We are so grateful you are here today. And we want to thank God once more again for uh, the celebrations committee for such an excellent work. You have really been a blessing. And we are grateful for that. And I want to thank the reverends and pastors that they heeded my word that this year they have improved. But I'm still not happy. So I'm asking them next year to add 10 to the number they brought. Because if they could have brought the number they brought, then they must increase it by 10. Otherwise, uh, you'll be transferred to Sinazongwe. There's no church there, so you start afresh. Uh, which other place in uh, Southern are, are we not there? Huh? Pemba. What other place? Huh? Sinazese. So these. We'll send you there. So, you people, if you don't, your pa you will love your pastor mobilize the people and save him. Hello? And what? Save him. However, don't get rid of him by not coming. Because you can do the reverse. How many are ready for the word of God? Lift your right hand and say, Father, thank you for tonight. I open my heart, I open my spirit to receive your word. I mix faith with your word. Let your word result in divine overflow in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Second Kings chapter 7, verses 1 to 9, then we'll jump to 16 through to 18. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. Elisha replied, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a seer of finest flour will sell for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens. Could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elisha, but you will not eat any of it. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there, and we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. Let us go over to the camp of the Armenians and surrender. If they spare us, we leave. If they kill us, then we die. 
At dusk they got up and went to the camp of the Armenians. When they reached the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the Armenians to hear the sound of chariots and horses and a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired the Hittites and the Egyptian kings to attack us. So they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys. They left the camp as it was and ran for their lives. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents and ate and drank. Then they took silver, gold and clothes and went off to hide them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, what we are doing is not right. This is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let us go at once and report this to the loyal palace. Verse 16. Then the people went out and plundered the camp with the Armenians. So a seer of finest flour sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley sold for a shekel, as the Lord had said. Now the king had put the officer on whose arm he leaned in charge of the gate. And the people trampled him in the gateway. And he died. Just as the man of God had foretold when the king came down to his house. It happened as the man of God had said to the king. About this time tomorrow, <clears throat> a seer of finest flour will sell for a shekel. And two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate in Samaria. Tonight, as we close, I want to speak to you on what I've titled a word of overflow. A word of overflow. The city of Samaria was under siege. It was shut up for some time by the Armenian army who had surrounded it. Famine had fallen upon the people to the extent that horrible things were happening in the city. There was no food in the city. People were starving. They had resorted to eating donkeys. A donkey's head became a delicacy. In one case, two women ate a baby. Cannibalism had set in. It was a national disaster. The economy had collapsed. It was in this situation of starvation, of helplessness, of hopelessness, that God sent Elijah to declare the word. And Elijah spoke into this situation. And said, by this time tomorrow, the finest flower will be sold at the gate. Body will also be sold at the gate. He prophesied that by tomorrow, the economy will turn around. Leaving us an example that all you need is a word. That is what you need. I have no idea what has collapsed in your life. 
I don't know what has collapsed in your life. Whether your marriage has collapsed, whether your relationship has collapsed, whether your business has collapsed, whether your ministry is collapsing, whether your education is collapsing. What you need is a word. A word of divine overflow. Let me share four things. Tonight, the first is the word of God for overflow. Elisha spoke into this situation of starvation, of hopelessness, of helplessness, of death. The word of overflow. God's overflow always begins with a word. It could be a prophetic word. It could be a scripture. It could be a rhema word. It could be a phrase. It could be a sentence from a sermon. Or it could be the theme of the year or the theme of the month. God's overflow begins with a word. Starting from Friday, I have been speaking to you the word of overflow. Perhaps your relationships has collapsed. Your marriage has collapsed. Your job has collapsed. Your business is collapsing. Your education is collapsing. You don't know where to turn to you. What you need is a word. Elisha prophesied tomorrow in 24 hours there will be a turnaround. I came to prophesy to somebody here that in the next 24 hours, your story will change. I came to prophesy that in three days, your story will change. In seven days, your story will change. In one month, your story will change. In three months, your story will change. All you need is to believe the word. Yesterday I told you three things of how you respond. Hear the word. Believe the word. And act on the word. Of overflow. Some years back. When we were at the old church. We received a man just came to know the Lord. He was a holder of big jobs during the calendar days. He worked in many places and amassed wealth. But over time, things collapsed in his life. His business collapsed. His job collapsed. Everything collapsed except his marriage. To the extent that he was owing people and was running away from people. By the time he came to church, he only had one asset left. An old Mercedes Benz. He was staying in a small two bedroom flat. Are you hearing me? To church. He heard me preaching on the power of sacrificial giving. And he went to his wife. He said, We must give a sacrifice. The wife said, What are we going to give? We have nothing. What is there to give? 
The man said, we still have our bedroom suite. They had an expensive white bedroom suite. And it had many pieces. Dressing table, big double bed, king size bed, not double bed. Then it had other pieces. The wife said, where are we going to sleep? The man said on the floor, let God see us. And one day, they hired a van and brought those pieces and put them on the altar like this, feeding the whole place. The man cried, the wife cried, they went home. A few days later, on a Sunday, we had a miracle service. I was preaching innocently. Then I looked at him and I called him. I said, come here. He came up. I said, this is what the Lord says. You shall walk in the corridors of power. The man fell down and cried like a baby. The devil whispered to me, since when? You have continued lying to people. This man is finished. What corridors of power is going to? <laughs> and I looked at him. Yes, it was true. Because we had to give him money for transport. We had to literally help him. Even money for food. In Bemba, they will say, Valiva Chilombe Lombe. You all remember that there was a crisis when we had the third term for President Chiluva. How many remember? And so later on, Manawasa was appointed to stand. This man disappeared. For months, we never saw him. Elections came. Manawasa won. The first press conference that Manawasa had, I was watching. I wanted to hear what he was going to say. Then, Manawasa came. People were seated. He was walking towards the table. Who was behind this same man carrying a briefcase? I said to my wife, come, 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 come. Is that so and so? He said, yes, he's the one. I said, what is he doing there? And I saw him open the briefcase and take out the papers and put them in front. The ones the president was going to use, the ones he was going to read from. So I said, this guy is genuine. Carrying the speech. <laughs> the following morning, he called me. He said, Bishop, how are you? I'm calling you from State House. I said, What are you doing there? <laughs> he answered me. He said, I am walking in the corridors of power. that you have heard. Believe that word. It may look impossible. It may look like it cannot happen. But God is not a man that he should lie. Has he not said? Will he not go? He will make a way for you where there is no way. By this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. By this time next week. By this time in three months, by this time in six months, your story will change. Listen to me. You don't have to remember every word I spoke. It's not necessary. 
All you need is to remember your own. The sentence, the phrase, the scripture, what God said. Stand on that. And God will bring it to pass. God will bring it to pass. The second thing I want to show you. Is the officer's response to the word of God. The king had come with an advisor. And he was leaning on this advisor. The advisor responded to the word. He said, this thing could not happen. It was impossible. It was too good to be true. The situation was far gone. The economy had collapsed. My bishop, there are some times you hear a word of God. It sounds too good to be true. Are you hearing me? Some things I've been saying since I came on Friday, they sound too good to be true. You look at your current situation, you look at what is happening, you say it is impossible. But is that not the same thing we saw on the first night? That Elijah, oh sorry, Elijah had a promise of rain. But when he looked up in the sky, there was no indications of rain. The sky was clear. You have a word of divine overflow. But when you look around you, there are no indicators. There is no promise of overflow. The advisor responded with unbelief. This cannot happen. But beloved, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Faith calls those things that are not as though they were. Listen. This man was walking by sight. He was looking at what was going on. This cannot happen. Let's be fair to him. He's not the only one. Abraham received visitors. Three angels. And he showed them hospitality. And as they were eating... He said, where is Sarah, your wife? They said, he said, oh, it's, she's in the tent. She's the one uh, doing, supervising all the cooking. Then one of them said, by this time next year, I shall return. And she will have a child. Sarah had it. And she laughed. A laughter of mockery. Shall I, in my old age, have the pleasure of having a child? What nonsense is this? Hello? Unbelief. When the angel asked, have you laughed? Why did you laugh? She said, no, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. You know how women are. I didn't laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is why the baby, the child was called Isaac. The meaning of Isaac is laughter. That's what it means. That's why they called him Isaac. But whether you laugh, whether you doubt, 
whether you question the word of God will be fulfilled it will come to pass the time came we don't know what happened and have no time to go into that but one day Father Abraham woke up like a young man and looked at Sarah. She was looking like a young woman. And uh, things happened. And later on, the old lady, <laughs> wah, wah, wah. The maids now are saying, what is going on? Who is responsible? <laughs> I came to tell you. Stop looking at the problem. Look at the solution. Faith does not look at the problem. Faith looks at the solution. Faith does not look at impossibility. But looks at possibilities. Are you hearing? The problem is that we have looked at the problem far too long. We need to develop an attitude of expectancy. God can do anything. He can rescue you from any situation. He can change your circumstances. He can turn your darkness into light. He can turn your sorrow into joy. He can turn your night into day. I came to prophesy that your story is about to change. Hear the word. Believe the word. Act on the word. The word that you have received. Stand on that word. You may not see anything happening some of you even when you go back things are going to get worse but stand on the word some of you your bosses are going to be rough with you stand on the word some of you things will be tough in your business stand on the word remember we walk by faith and not by sight Your overflow is coming. It's not by mighty. It's not by power. But the spirit of the living God. Overflow came through lepers. The third thing we see is that overflow came through lepers. God immediately went to work. He had given his word by this time tomorrow. Within his word, there is power for fulfillment. God is true to his word. He watches his word to perform it. When God spoke the word of divine overflow, immediately he went to work. To work out the fulfillment of that word in your life, in your church, in your business, in your family. God knew where the flower was, God knew where the body was. It was in the enemy's camp. God knew the answer was down the road. The answer was around the corner. I don't know who I came to preach to. I want to tell you something tonight. That God knows where your overflow is. God knows where your finances are. God knows where your husband is. God knows where your wife is. God 
God knows where your house is. God knows where the farm is. God knows where your breakthrough is. He knows. He knows. He caused the Armenian army to hear the sound of horses and chariots and they concluded that Israel had hired a great army so they got up and ran away from their tents. They left the tents the way they were. They left their horses. They ran for their lives. I came to prophesy that your enemy will flee with no one chasing him. Amen. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. This year, God will fight your battle. This year, your enemy will run with no one chasing. Are you hearing me? And God used the lepers. These lepers were outcasts. They stayed outside the city. They were not allowed because everywhere they went, they, were, they had to say, unclean, unclean. They were outcasts. God used the weak to save the strong. This year, God will use what is despised, what is weak, the place you least expect your overflow. God will use. These lepers began to speak. They said to each other, why stay here and die? We'll die of hunger. There's nothing to eat. Then they said, if we go to the city, there is no food in the city. We'll also die. But if we go to the camp of the Armenians and surrender, they may spare us or they may kill us. Are you hearing me? There are five places where people die. <laughs> Why stay here and die? Let me share five places where people die. Number one, you can die in a marriage. You say, Bishop, what do you mean? Your husband comes late at 2 a.m. He comes at 3 a.m. He beats you. Sometimes he never even comes home. You don't even know where he sleeps. You don't even know what he does. Why stay there and die? This man is every day breaking his marriage vows. Hello? One day he will beat you and kill you. Do you know what he will say? It is alcohol. But you are dead. You are saying, Bishop, are you saying that I should divorce? No, I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, why stay there and die? You are married and you are always beaten. 
Like one man who was being beaten all the time. There were times you just say, Ndefo kulala mungu minechari mo. Why stay here and die? And some of you women are so foolish that you are the one who works. You are the one who even gives him money. And he comes and beats you on top of that. Why stay here and Why stay here? The second place where people die, they die in a job. You are working, you are not making progress. Year after year, year after year, you are just on the same place. And yet they say you are a very faithful worker. You have now taken a credit here, credit there, credit there, and people are pursuing you. When people come to visit you from Namala, come to Livingstone, they see the chairs you are sitting on. They see the bed you sleep on. They see what you eat. They just say, why don't you follow us to the village? What is keeping you in town? Why stay here and die? There's no progress. You may come out of that place with nothing. No pension. Or very little pension. That within your short time, you die of depression. Why stay here and Die. The third place where people die is in business. You call yourself a businessman, a businesswoman. But day in, day out is losses. Every month is losses. So you have borrowed here, you have borrowed there, you have borrowed there. You have bo people are always looking for you. You even have three cheap phones. One Zamtel, one Airtel, one MTN. So you know which one to answer. When you look, hey, this one I cannot answer. This one I can answer. Are you hearing? Why stay in business and die? If you are not making a profit, you are not a businessman. You are not a businesswoman. Period. Not all of us are called to do business. Hello? If you don't make profit, leave that thing. It's not for you. Why stay and die? How long will you be running away from people? Ulcers inside the stomach. Why stay? in business and die. The fourth place where people die is they die in the church. You go to a church where there's no word. Day in, day out. Sunday, Sunday after Sunday. Right? Month after month. Eh, eh, there's no ministry. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. There's no food, spiritual food. You are dying. The sermons you receive are sermons of Jerita and Berita. Kalulu. Muntu Monavengi. Why stay there and die? Pastors, feed the people. Do you know, 
A shepherd takes the sheep to green pastures. When the sheep eat and drink, they will grow fat and they will give wool. Hello? And they will reproduce. How does the church grow? It is by the pastor feeding the flock with the word of God. Why stay here and die? There are many people who are dying in the churches. May you not be the one. Amen. Lastly, you can die in studies. You have been studying, studying, studying for this degree, for this diploma, open university. You are distant, long distance, and then sometimes you even go for residential. But you're still bad. Seven years studying for a diploma. They don't bring what I've read. But they You are finishing your money. If you are not passing, why stay there and die? Has made us differently. There are those who have smart heads, and there are some of us who are good with our hands. Some of us are good with our feet. If your head is not working, your hands may work, your legs may work. Your cooking may work. Find what you are good at. Do you know some good businessmen, they've not gone far in education. All they know is how to count money. Why study and die? Feel like if my book with you. Voila, voila. out what God has blessed you with. Your blessing may not in the brain, may be in your hands, may be in your legs, may be in something else. Find it. Hello? It could be even funny. You can be great feeding living stuff. Even the educated, the professors, they eat your food. Why stay here and die? You know, I forgot one little point. There, when I was talking about people dying in church, there are some who say, I'm a pastor. And they start a church. Or somehow they find themselves in a church. But the church does not grow. The ten they found are reduced to five. Year in, the church does not grow. Why stay there and die? Hello? If God has called you, he will give you the grace of pastoring. People will be saved. The church will grow. Bashima people. You will end up after the service, the 10 people have given. 
they come and hand you the, the offering. <laughs> because, eh, hey, money for 15 kwacha. <laughs> so, why don't you stand on your fish? Why do you have a pastor? Next month again, next Sunday again, that time people only give seven kwacha. So again they give it to you. Allah for Muntu Akwalesa. Why stay here and die? Go and look for a job. Are you hearing me? And then you can save in a church as an elder. You can start as a deacon, maybe they promote you to an elder, and you'll be fulfilled. Hello? Not every one of you are, can be a pastor. Ni gifty. The Bible says when Jesus ascended, he gave gifts that some should be apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. It's not just you waking up in the morning. and the pastor. Quisa. <laughs> and you know there will be more people who will be dying with you your wife <laughs> is dying with you your children they are dying with you why stay here and die and die you know this has just come to my, my spirit. That there are also girls who die in a relationship. Hello? There are girls who die in a... There are women who die in... You are in this relationship. You are in the relationship. And you are the one taking care of the man. Hello? You buy him shoes. You buy him clothes. And if you have got a top job, he borrows your car while you are working. Why stay in that relationship and die? Chanshi chochi ne. Now hear me and hear me God. You can never marry a person like that. Why? Because you never respect that person. And if you never respect a man, there's no marriage. Hello? Because in that relationship, you are the man. A man is wired and ordained to provide for you. Hello? It is a man who must provide for you. Not the way, the other way around. Women are built to receive. Hello? You know, I preached on this, but there's a revelation that God gave me recently. I read about this revelation. Listen, do you know that God first established the Garden of Eden? Are you hearing me? Before he created Adam. And then God brought Adam to work before he created Eve. Are you hearing me? So by the time Eve was coming, Adam was already a worker in the garden to provide for Eve. That is the law of God. If 
the man you are going out with is depending on you. You are the provider. That relationship is going nowhere. It is not the order of a man. Sorry, for a woman to be supporting a man. Now, why did I go there? Let's go and preach about the lepers. I know somebody needed to hear that. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Are you hearing me? Why stay here and die? You can die in the church. You can die in a relationship. You can die in a business. You can die. Are you hearing me? Why stay here and die? So the lepers did three things. The lepers did three things. Number one, they made a decision. If you are going to get from where you are, you must make a decision. Tonight, make a decision. They made a decision to live where they were. You must make a decision. Number two, they applied faith. Faith means taking a risk. They put their hands in God. Listen, put your hands in God. Have faith. Number three, they were courageous. They said, if we die, we die. We are going. Listen, in life, you need to be willing to be courageous. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. There comes a time in life where you take the bull by its own. And so they got up and started walking towards the camp in the night. They found that the camp was empty. It was deserted. They found that everybody had run away. <laughs> They entered the first tent. They found food. They ate. They ate. They ate. Then they saw clothes. Then they saw silver. They saw gold. They grabbed it and ran and hid it and entered another tent. And again, they ate. They ate. Then they saw gold. They saw silver. They grabbed it and ran and again went and hid and then came. It was now an overflow. Are you hearing me? Then one of them said, what we are doing is not right. If we don't report to the king's palace, we are going to be in problems. Let's, this is a day of good news. Let's go and share it. Do you know, Pastor Chiwe, that is what the gospel is all about. It's one beggar finding bread and going to tell others where to find it. Are you hearing me? He ran back. They ran back and went and reported. So the people came out. They found this huge place with tents full of wheat, full of barley. So was Samoa. They would take from here, take from there, take from here, take from there, take from here. They were now confused. And within a few hours, they opened the gate. Bambo kutantika. Tuma flower. Tuma body. Baha tantika. Hawa nweka shiba tantika. Baha mbano kushitisha. The word of God was fulfilled. Tomorrow! Tomorrow! Within 24 hours, the finest flower will be sold at the gate. Body will be sold at the gates. Are you hearing me? I prophesy. 
that your story is about to change. Within 24 hours, your promotion will be raised. Within 24 hours, a contract will be given to you. Within 24 hours, you receive a letter. Within 24 hours, your story will change. In three days, your story will change. In seven days, your story will change. In 21 days, your story will change. Are you hearing me? As you go from this place, have faith. Have faith that God will do it for you. It's not by mighty, nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Somebody here will have a testimony. Somebody here will have a testimony. Are you hearing me? Please sit down. I want you to see something very powerful. Unbelief judged. And belief judged. As the people were pushing for good spots to sell the flower and the berry and the barley at the gate, the king appointed his advisor to be in charge of the gateway. But when the people were justly, when the people were pushing, when they were trying to get good places, they pushed him. He fell down. And the people stepped on him. They trampled on him. And the king's advisor died. He saw the finest flower. He saw the body. But he died. He had questioned the word of God. He had doubted the word of God. He had disputed the word of God. That same word was now fulfilled in his life. Listen to me. You can doubt anything. But never doubt the word of God. You may not understand the word of God. You may not understand what is being preached. You may not agree with what is being said. But don't question it. Don't dispute it. Because we see that God judges and believes. Because unbelief is an insult to the integrity of God. God is not a man that he should love. No, a son of man that he should repent. Has he not said? Will he not do? You may speak in unbelief. You will see the divine overflow. But you will not experience it. God punishes unbelief. It is an insult to God's integrity. It amounts to saying God is a liar. Be careful how you respond to the word of God. It's better you don't say anything. Just keep quiet. Keep it to yourself. As we bring this to a close tonight, in this year of divine overflow, you need a word from the Lord. You need a word of overflow. You need a word for your miracle. You need a word from the throne of grace. In this year, you need to run with the word of overflow. Whatever you have heard this week, Friday, Saturday, and today, lock in that word. It could be a sentence. It could be a phrase. It could be a scripture. 
Lock it in your spirit. Believe it. Act on it. God is able to change your darkness into light. Your sorrow into joy. Your night into day. Your disappointment into an appointment. Your testing into a testimony. Your rejection into selection. Who am I preaching to? Believe the word. Begin to thank God for that word. Stand on that word. It is your word of divine overflow. When God wants to take you to another level, to bring overflow in your life, he will give you a word. Hold on to that word. Word. Have you received a word? Do you believe that word? Stand on that word. He that promised is faithful. He will do it for you. This year, you will have a testimony. This year, you will dance your dance. This year, your star will shine. This year, you will not see shame. This year, heaven will smile on you. If you are the one, shout a big hallelujah. And stand on your feet. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, I am grateful for the words that I heard from Friday until now. Father, I believe I'm in my season of overflow. I believe on your word. I am standing on your word. Perform your word in my life. In Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and begin to pray that prayer. Father, I thank you. For your word. I receive your word of divine overflow. I am standing on that word. Perform your word. Fulfill it in my life. Let it come to pass. In 24 hours. In three days. In one month. In three months. In six months, let your word come to pass in my life. I am standing on your word. I am standing on your word. I refuse to take no for an answer. I refuse to take no for an answer. I refuse to take no for an answer. I am standing on your word. I am standing on your word. Remas Sarabash Yerebos Ikatarababos Yeremes Mikatarababos Riende Rebebos. I am standing on your word. I'm standing on your word. Fulfill your word in my life. Let your word come to pass in my life. I'm standing on your word. I am standing on your head. I refuse to take no for an answer. Rema Serebes. Rema Bos. Remes. Mindes. Riakatarababos. I am standing on your head. I am standing on your head. Fulfill your word. Ye kerebeboso, marebeboso, liyerebebosh, mi katarababoso, 
I am standing on your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have praise. If you have not received this word, I want you to pray this prayer. Say, oh Lord, send me from your throne of grace a word for my divine overflow. In Jesus' name. Oh Lord, by your grace, send me from the throne of grace a word for my divine overflow. In Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. By your grace. From your throne of grace. Send me a word for my divine overflow. Send me a word, Lord. Send me a word, Lord, for my divine overflow. Send me a word, Lord, for my divine overflow. Send me a word, Lord. Send me a word, Lord. Send me a word. Send me a word, Lord. For my divine overflow. Send me a word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus name. We have prayed. Say oh Lord. Lord. I believe. That in the next 24 hours. The next. Three days. The next 21 days, the next three months, my overflow will be manifested. Father, I believe that in the next 24 hours, in the next three days, the next three months, the next 21 days, my overflow will be manifested in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Make it happen Lord. Make it happen for me Lord. In the next 24 hours. In the next three days. Make it happen Lord. Make it happen for me, Lord. In the next 21 days, make it happen for me, Lord. Hey, Shakarababoso. Yerebebos. Ikarababoso. Rianderebebos. Make it happen, Lord. In the next 24 hours. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. I would love to lay hands on all of you, but you are too many. I would like to personally anoint you, but you are too many. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to pray for oil. And I'll send the pastors. They'll come. You dip your finger in that oil. And anoint yourself. We are going to call this the oil of overflow. Yeah. Oil is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. If you feel that you are not free to do that, let the ball pass. But everything is done by faith in the kingdom of God. And as that oil comes upon you, whatever powers of darkness has been oppressing you, it will leave you. Sickness will be healed. Growth will disappear. 
powers of witchcraft to set you free. Every curse will be broken in your life. That anointing will position you for divine overflow. Wherever you go, favor will attend to you. Let me have the oil. Where is the oil? And we have both um, Thank you, Lord. I want us to pray. Point your hands as we pray for this. Point your hands towards this oil, towards me as we pray and agree together. There is no magic that we are doing. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for this olive oil which represents your Holy Spirit. We ask, oh God, that wherever it is applied, the power of the Holy Spirit will be manifested to heal, to deliver, to set free, to perform miracles. We pray that it will be a mystery in a bottle. We now consecrate it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as holy anointing oil. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, remain standing. When the oil is applied, you dip your right finger and anoint yourself on the forehead and then you sit down and pray. So the pastors will come, you will anoint yourself.
Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
Ghost. Pray the Holy Ghost. Hey, 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 hey. Pray where you are. Yeah, yeah, hey, hey. Thank you, Lord. Let's all be quiet. Let's all stand wherever we are. Just stand. Let's be quiet. Lift up your two hands. Let's be quiet. Let's be quiet. Say, oh Lord, by faith, I receive the anointing for overflow. This oil upon my head, let it result in overflow. Release your power. Release your power. Release your power upon me now in Jesus' name. Every power that has hindered my progress, I command it to lose me now. Every power that has said no to my overflow. Be nullified by the blood of Jesus. By faith, I receive an anointing for divine overflow. From now on, Spirit of the living God, you are the power of God. I invite you to move from the front to the back, on the balcony, on my right, in the press team, on my left, thou power of God, move. Yerababos! Yerababos! Yekarebebos! Ashes, bring me the people that are coming under the power. Holy Ghost, move! From the back to the front. From the back to the front. In every roll of chair. Thou power of God, set the captives free. Seal the sick. Deliver! Deliver! Yerebebos! Yerebebos! Yikarababos! Yorobosika! Manderebebos! From the back to the front, on my right, on my left, in every roll of chair, thou power of God, Move, 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 move in the press team. Move, Rababos, Yerebebos, Mika Rababos, Yerebebos, Ikata Rababos, Yande Rebebos. Loose and let her go. Loose him in the name of Jesus and let him go. Loose her in the name of Jesus and let her go. You foul spirit. You unclean spirit. You spirit of infirmity. Loose him. 
Loose him from disease. Loose him from sickness. Loose him from every unclean spirit. Thank you, Lord. Marababos. Yerebebos. Yerebebos. Mikarababos. Yeres mengesh. Mandisi ribes. Yamash mengesh. Rababos. Yerebebos. Rebebos. Somebody's being healed. A growth in the leg is being healed. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. There's a woman, you feel like a snake, something twisting in your stomach. Right now, receive your healing. I lose you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's somebody here, you feel your head, sometimes it's like you are being burnt. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing now. Receive your healing. There's a woman here with an issue of blood. You are always bleeding. Receive your healing now. Right now. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Lift up your two hands and say, Oh Lord, touch me. I need fresh oil. Anoint me for my overflow in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Anoint me with your power for overflow. Now, 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 in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands. The power of God is coming upon you. There are about 21 of you. The power of God is coming upon you. Fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh oil, fresh anointing. Fresh oil. Five of you in the press team. Five of you are in the press team. Receive fresh oil. Receive fresh oil. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive fresh oil. Hey, Sharababosoko. Yerebebosh. Yerebes. Ribabos. Mikarababosoko. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the oil. 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 Lift up your hands and begin to thank the Lord for the oil. Thank you for the oil. Thank you for the oil. Thank you for the oil. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There are some of you are going through an operation. The Holy Spirit is carrying out an operation. You are being healed. Something is happening. Somebody, you are, you are being healed. Your shoulders, something is happening there. There is somebody here also. The back, your back is being healed. Something is happening there. There's somebody here. Your right foot, your right foot has been swelling. And God is healing you. Receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Mara serebebosh. Yerebeboso. Manderebebosh. Thank you, Lord. Let me invite a bishop to come. Bishop Chatupa and your wife just come. Let's just release an impartation. An impartation for the next level. An impartation for the next level. An impartation for thousands. An apostolic grace for thousands. Hey, Karebe Shika Mabasike. Yarababose Mendese. Hey, Kashika Babosoko. Yarababos. 
Ikarababoso. Father, an anointing for thousands, apostolic grace. We release it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me invite the reverence to come with your wives. Just come quickly. Makatarababoso. Yerebebosh. Mikarababoso. Yakatarababoso. Menderebebosh. Makotorobosa. Mandiseberese. Such as I have, I release it into your life. More grace. More power. More anointing. The grace of building in the name of Jesus. Fire! My God, bless your daughter. More grace upon her. More anointing. Thank you, Lord. I release an anointing. Such as I have, I give to you. Such as I have. Mares Revesh. Mangash Kenebes. Let me ask the pastors to come. Just pastors, your wife will come later. Yeah, Sike Revesh. Mandisi. Bring, bring, bring Reverend back to me. Bring him back to me. Both the two reverends come. This marks a lifting in your ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. This marks a lifting. Your voice shall be heard. You are not going back the same. You will thunder. Demons will submit to you. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, on these choice servants, I release the grace of overflow. The grace of overflow to bear much fruit, to increase and multiply, receive it. 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 To increase and multiply, receive the grace. To increase and multiply, receive the grace. Makesh Kabaseke. Such as I have, I release into your life. Such as I have, I release into your life. Go back a different man. Remas. Mandiseke Shikarabaso. Father, let your fire burn in this man. Let him be changed into another man. Tonight, let your glory come upon him. Masike temesh. Yesebe keshika mangasa. Yamisi. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Fire. Fire, fire, maras revesh, rababos, yerebebos, hey, be changed into another man. Release of the Holy Ghost upon your life. Mangash, mengesh. Ramas Mo Marivesh The rest of you lift up your hands Say thank you Lord Release Into my life The gifts of the Holy Spirit The word of knowledge The word of wisdom the gift of prophecy, the gift of faith, the working of miracles, the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, discernment of spirits, 
the gift of healings. Release it now into my life. Into my life. Receive it now. I release the gifts to you. 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 Receive. 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 Yerebes. Marababos. Ikarababos. Yerebebos. Receive the gifts of the Spirit. Receive the gift of leadership. Receive the gift of mercy. Release the gift of giving. Release the gift of hesitation. Release the gift of mercy. Receive it now. Receive the gift of mercy. Receive the gift of leadership. Receive the gift of exhortation. Exhortation. Re receive the gift of giving. Ha, sabash. Reseke mashika. Masike reveboshi. Monde seke shimaka tarabarisi. Liondo somongoshi. Masere beboshi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you. I believe by faith I have received. I believe my life will never be the same again. I believe something has happened. As I go back, I'm going in the power of the Holy Spirit. I am going back to my overflow. Thank you, Lord, that you have done it in my life. I give you praise. I give you worship. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. According to your faith, so shall it be. Receive divine overflow. Receive fresh anointing. Receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Receive the gifts of leadership, of exhortation, the gift of mercy, the gift of giving. Receive the gift of an apostle, the gift of an, a prophet, the gift of an evangelist, the gift of a pastor. Receive the gift of a teacher. You are blessed. You are blessed forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord go before you. May he bless you on every side. May you not see shame. May your star shine. May you overflow in every area of your life. You are blessed forever. What God has blessed, no one can curse. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Go in the mercy of the Holy Spirit. And be established as a righteous man, a righteous woman, a righteous youth. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. Amen. Hallelujah. All if you believe that was your word and this has been your conference, go ahead and give Jesus a big, big hand. I said, go ahead and give Jesus a big, big hand. 
Hallelujah. Where is the gentleman with the mic? We'll sing a few songs, just celebrate the Lord, and then we'll release. And I believe our Father has released us. We are blessed. Amen. We want to thank God for all the pastors, the leaders that are here. Again, the Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. Praise Him. Are you coming? person who come and give us guidance on the remaining things that we need to do. Hallelujah. So let's welcome the chairperson. by the press team uh, just under five minutes or so we are going to switch